Hello everyone. I hope everybody is with good health and in good condition. Although this is very difficult to concentrate and work in this period of time, but I would like to thank the organizers and all the authors to make this conference uh, happen. Um, so let's start. I'm Salma Begum, a PhD researcher from OZA Research Group in the Department of Architecture um, in Kyoto, Belgium. And my um, PhD research is about the future of one landscape of Taco, and this presentation is part of the research progress. To this presentation, um, I'm going to talk about the interplay between the natural landscape, public space, and um, the growth form within the constant transformation of the landscape. So the whole presentation uh, has five sections where it would cover a bit of context um, in larger scale and then uh, the major problem and what question I try to deal with and the goal and conclusion. So Dhaka is <clears throat> the capital of Bangladesh and Bangladesh is of Southeast Asia in the global context, which used to be a part of India and Pakistan and now is an independent country bordered by India on its three sides and on south by Bay of Bengal. And on the right side, as you can see from the diagram, the inner core center of Dhaka is Dhaka City Corporation and uh, the outer part is the bigger Dhaka City area. So my focus would be the Dhaka City Corporation area. To understand the context of Bangladesh and Dhaka, it's very important to understand the major bigger scale of the um, area. Um, so Bangladesh comprises major part of Bengal Basin, which have formed by its three major river system, the Ganges, Brahmaputra, and Meghna. Ganges and Brahmaputra is very important in this context to understand because they have been shifting their courses over the time. And due to their shifts, uh, the land formation was kind of very different in different periods. So while forming the Bengal Delta, it has three different elements uh, in its uh, courts. One is the variant um, and multiple tract as uplifted deposits. The other is Kumila Terrace uh, from Holocene period. So here, Dhaka is located on the uplifted uh, Modupur uh, terrace, terraces. And this is uh, kind of known as the most fluvial part of the Bengal Basin. And this area is um, a bit higher area rather than the surrounding areas near Taka. So present Taka is uh, bordered by three main river throughout Buri Ganga and Balu, and on north it is bordered by Tumi Canal. Dhaka used to be um, dissected by a lot of canals and um, river systems, and that's why it used to be known as the Venice of East. But at present, this is not the case. Here is a bit context about um, Dhaka. It is a home of 50 million people and ranked as ninth um, largest among the world. And it uh, did its unplanned urbanization and growth. Uh, it has been facing continuous destruction of open areas and green spaces. So in the pretext of urbanization since 1960, it has been losing all of its wetlands, water bodies, and green areas. From a study it has been shown that in 1960, almost 80% land was agricultural, cultivated land, uh, wetland, which has been reduced by 2005 in 40%. And those remaining areas are in very under maintained conditions and in very underprivileged state. So if we look at the present um, image of uh, open area, 
it shows how actually the quality of open areas are now. It's not maintained at all and not designed properly and the accessibility is very less to these places. So the places actually lacks the quality of being as a space, as a resource. If you look also to the other leftover spaces lying in between two different neighborhoods where the rail line is passing by, you see it is mostly occupied on both of the sides by the informal settlements and other areas are not in use which actually have a potential to be a performative or um, productive landscape. And then all, a lot of uh, water bodies are now disappearing and this space is used to be a very good social space back then, which is now kind of being eaten up by the hill form. Also, if we look at the lakes within the city, what is happening to the edges. So one of its part comprises the carriers buildings and on the other side, it comprises informal sectors without having any dialogue in between them. And these places could be a place of renegotiation. Finally, if we look at the riverbank of Buribonga where the city actually grew, this is now a kind of a drain. It's, it doesn't act like a river anymore and a lot of uh, wests are there, mostly industrial wests are dumped there, informal sectors are occupying the streets. It, it is rather a transit place, not a place for social gathering, but the scenario was a bit different in the previous time. If you look at this image, you could see the same place uh, exactly what was happening back then, so how the river and the land were interacting with each other and how the river bank was being used by the city people. So now the question is to ambition a sustainable development, we should probably look back because now what sort of future we are envisioning for our city we still don't know. So we should understand the interplays that happened previous time, or we should unfold the historical layers to understand the possibility of future Dhaka. So the goal is to unfold those layers and to see what actually it offer us as a possibility for a future public open space. Being a capital city, Dhaka has been experiencing different kind of um, political uh, periods. And with those political periods, there are a lot of changes happen due to the acts or due to the development. Um, not only the natural um, incidents, but also human intervention have a great impact on the city fabric. So this timetable shows few important incidents and um, events that have in impact on Dhaka's um, changes. So the Ganges has started to change its course since 16th century, from 1574 actually. Um, and then in, in 17th um, century, the Brahmaputra also started its um, course to change. So all these um, shifts of rivers have a major impact in the microscope social open spaces. Um, however, <clears throat> main important incidents are the shipments of Ganges and the evolution of Brahmaputra. So Dhaka used to be located here at the confluence of Ganges and Brahmaputra directly falling into the Bay of Bengal. And then in 1615, when Ganges divided into two different branches, one going directly to the Dhaka and other going directly to the Shabdal, the land masses were um, divided by different uh, water streams. And then the Brahmaputra divided into two different sections. One is Shitaloka, there is Brahmaputra over here. Finally, when 
it started to shift from the east part of Mutuku Track to the west part. Um, and in 1830, when the evolution completed, the river completely changed its course and reappeared as Zumuna River on the west part of the Mutuku Track. And the final Ganges and the Brahmaputra confluence happens actually uh, on the west, northwest part of Dhaka city. And then it again meet here at Meghna and finally fall into the Bay of Bengal. And the present Dhaka situation is kind of like this. Um, it reappeared from the Puriganga uh, River, uh, which is a distributary of the Dhaleshwari. So this part of um, the area have a big impact uh, from the larger scale changes in Ganges and from the river system. This is a map from 1780 shows different um, uh, situation across different scale. Uh, so you could see the city at that time in Mughal period were expanding in this direction and the major structures were the forts and the uh, garden houses and the mosques. Um, and most important thing is to notice at the time also, the city was bordered by this forest ecology on one side and other side by this river system. This is the area era where first the human intervention as canalization was seen. So the city was bordered half of it by the Hulai River and then Islam Khan um, canalized the other half of the city to fortify this area. Um, so this is how we see how the urban, urban morphology and the settlement were interacting uh, with the natural settings um, and the settlements. Um, the mosques uh, was one of the important uh, elements from that period and developing also near a water uh, body. Uh, this river was a alternate route to go to the Brahmaputra by avoiding the hostile area on the east side. Um, so if we look here, uh, after the canalization, the whole scenario is kind of like this. And then the uh, excess of development for the city was developing around um, either on the river side or on the perpendicular to the river. And this crossing of streets ending up in the north, which used to be known as Chalk or node, a central gathering space. So this sort of space or central gathering area that the public space was surfacing back then, uh, the in, in compactment garden and the pleasure garden also the historic city core and this kind of node. Um, so Dhaka has been reappearing, resurfacing, restructuring in different different sites over 2,500 years. So if, if you could see that the first area uh, where it was appearing is in Wari Batasha and then Bikrampur and then Shanarga and finally at this present state. And one important thing to notice about all this settlement is that um, all of them grew along the riverside. All of uh, the settlement have a river bank. Um, there are a few reasons to it. Uh, back then, that was known for uh, Muslim production and the Muslim cloth was uh, kind of uh, threaded by a specific thread uh, grew out of um, Putikarpa's tree which used to grow near Kitalokka river and this need a specific temperature humidity as well as a river bank. So um, there were the commercial purpose, the agricultural purpose and also the accessibility of those settlements to go along these um, river areas. And um, from this image, you could see how the natural landscape and the man-made landscape were in interaction and the people's life. But this sort of fabric started to change when the British took over in 1757 after the Polish battle. So they started to build the metal road piped water areas and the main intervention was the railway line. So the railway uh, sitting in between those green spaces connecting from Narangan's port to other parts 
of the city um, have a great impact for the city growth and as well as uh, to the river. With the fall of the Muslim production, as the British actually put a high tax on the uh, local clothes and imported machine made uh, Muslim cloth from England, as well as they destroyed all the trees, Putikarpas trees, uh, to stop the production. This is how the dependency on the river was reduced. And this even enhanced by the implementation of the railway when the city started to grow towards the north by showing its back to the river. From this image, you could see how the British were occupying by their military outside of these port areas. Uh, and one interesting thing to notice in this period is that uh, even though they were giving it their back to the river, but as well as they were digging up some ponds and a small water bodies inside the city area on the highlands, so the urban landscape and natural landscape started to having a dialogue with each other um, in this time. So those ponds were basically um, were built um, due to the um, practices related to the waters, such as near the temple or near the mosques or near the uh, residential areas of the university area. This temple um, dates back to very early period. It's, it is known as Dhaka Shari Temple. Etymologically, Dhaka kind of came from this name. So um, this period sees how actually human um, intervention as a, the urban landscape evolves around the natural landscape. And one more important intervention was a dike, um, a prominent uh, and an embankment together built over here. So this prominent was the first official public open space uh, in British period. And the expansion continues uh, also after the liberation uh, in 1971, and it mostly grew towards the north by occupying all of its lowlands, wetlands, um, not only the highlands, but all of the uh, vacant areas were being wrapped up for the development. And at present, the city looks like this. Inside the city, leaving a very tiny amount of open spaces and also not just the uh, amount is uh, smaller, but all the quality of the spaces are really very um, bad in condition. So um, from all this um, analysis, uh, the finding is as a Delta city, Dhaka really lacks um, its uh, quality of being a Delta city. It was born near Buriwanga, but yet it uh, kind of denies its uh, reality of um, being a Delta city. Um, so it doesn't have to be a picturesque landscape uh, to show, but maybe it could be a way to show uh, how to live with water bringing completeness by ecology, culture, economy, and communication. Uh, city is a narrative of um, multiple experience gained through this interplay between urban form and natural landscape and public open spaces within the fluid landscape. So as a Bengali city, uh, as yet to be a modern contemporary city, Dhaka really needs a reclamation of public open space even this shifting uh, landscapes. And without the discourse on the relevance of Dhaka being a part of Bengal Delta and its evolution, this reclamation would be incomplete. So this is why the article and the presentation unfolded here, the shifting chronology of Bengal Delta through understanding the matrix of river um, and the city within the history. Additionally, this also tried to focus on how the ecology was being shaped by the uh, society and vice versa. Nonetheless, the unfolding um, of these historical layers tried to place Dhaka within this shifting dialogue with river and to see what kind of um, possibility uh, uh, so, and solution uh, this historical analysis could offer for future uh, or the present problem. Um, thank you for watching.